Welcome to the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright. This show is all about honoring you as a spiritual being, having a human experience. You are here for a reason, and it's no mistake that you are here on earth right now. Spirit has guided you to this very moment in time, so you could hear the messages Pam is about to share with you. She is a multidimensional healer, light language channel, transformation coach, wife and mother committed to helping you discover the tools and practices to empower you to live the best life you can. You get to choose the spirit path you take. You can connect to the spiritual guidance already all around you. Get ready to live a fully empowered life. This is the Empower Me Show. Welcome back once again to another powerful week of the Empower Me Show. My name is Pam Bright, and I'm your hostess for this beautiful program. I say beautiful because we have been going since 2021, and it's just amazing to me how much we have grown uh, as a show, but also as a company with Transformation Network. It's amazing how much we get to really bring wisdom and authenticity and personal growth and expansion to all of you listeners who continue to come back week after week to each of these shows. Thank you so much for joining us today. I also want to give a special shout out to those of you who are not in the United States, but in other countries who are tuning in. Um, Some of them I've heard are um, Germany, um, Australia, New Zealand, um, even um, India, um, any any of you who are listening from there, thank you for tuning in. Um, and any of you who are especially connected to the African continent as well, um, I have gotten uh, information from Kenya. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that very much. And yes, of course, we'll continue to pray for you. Um, My name is Pam Bright. This is my dear friend, Angie McAllister, who is joining us as well with her beautiful program. What is the name of your program again, sweetie, that you have your your business? It's uh, Intuitive Spiritual Coaching. There we go. Perfect. So you can talk to her in just a second. We're going to get ourselves really centered here into this moment so that we can be here now in this physical body that you inhabit. I always need to just kind of bring myself back from wherever I've been in my day so that I can bring all of my essence into this moment. So we start with our breath and we just allow that sacred breath to enter in to our lungs. It's our God, God uh, gift really for living that we get to breathe ourselves. We, it's just a natural part of who we are as all of the different parts of our bodies, our, all of the organs work intrinsically, intrinsically together. We bring this breath into our lungs. And then as that comes in, we get to bring all of the breath in through all of the body, including our feet and our legs, our torso, our arms, our fingers, our brains, all of our head, right? All of us get to experience this breathing. And as we breathe, we remember who we are and why we are here right now. And so as you connect in, we ask the creator of all that is, the one who lives and breathes within all things, to come in fully and completely into this now into these beautiful beings that are listening now and later on, whenever that is for them. And we ask all the guides, teachers, and angels that love us infinitely to join us today. Iana sana ite na maike ya ute sana me me shana maise manana ye. 
And with that, we open to this broadcast for you. Welcome back. Angie, thank you so much for joining me today. You are welcome. So we- Happy to be here. Yay. So we are conscious, what we call conscious channels for you folks that are listening. And what that means is that we are conscious about our connections to whatever it is that we bring in. And often the beings that want to work with us, just let us know, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm coming now. I've got some information for you. And other times we actually hear things or see things we get some kind of sensation in our bodies that let us know, hey, there's somebody here that wants to share um, or some being that wants to give information. So that's why we're here today is to really bring all of that to you that are listening today. Ah, so as far as that goes, Angie, I know that you tune in often to whatever's there for you. Mm -hmm. As you were tuning into this broadcast, can I sh can you share with us what you have picked up so far about what the energies are, what's wanting to come through, what the needs are of the many that are watching? Well, don't put me on the spot or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I often do that. You know that. <laughs> come on, we can do it. <laughs> I, I feel the overwhelming love of the Palladians right now who want to share the message of transformation, of looking within, of us being the creator and all the expansion that that entails. That's that awesome. Is the frequency that's coming in for me right now. Yes. Beautiful. Awesome. So how would you like to start that transmission? Would you like to do a little meditation for that? Would you like to just let me let you have the floor? You want me to ask them some questions? How would you like to Let's do Let's do questions. Let's do questions right now first. Okay, yes. great. All right. So those of you who are listening live, uh, you actually can call in and ask your own questions of the Pleiadians if you would like to. That number is 1-800-930-2819. And we're going to be here the whole hour, um, actually 50 minutes or so now. Um, but you can call us or you can also go to the chat line on Transformation Talk Radio. Um, and it's up on your screen. I believe if you're tuned in, you can <laughs> actually type that in. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can also do that. And Emily, you will make sure that you check that for us as we go along. So for me, what is it that I want the, to know from the Pleiadians right now? Mm. Boy, this is November. So this is a time of people really gearing up for the holidays and the stress of that. If people are connecting in with their families and <laughs> And the really the busyness of life um, that people experience as a collective, but also at this time in history, it seems like there's a lot more um, challenging energies of the world, a lot of heaviness, a lot of just a lot going on. So I would say, what is the what is what is the best way? for us to handle the not only the personal stresses that we're experiencing but really the effect of all of the global um, energies that are happening the i believe the best way to go about this is to start to disconnect yourself from things like the politics and things that really bring in a lot of the stress in your life right now. And one thing I'm feeling from this um, holiday season or the winter season, or as it gets darker, is that we are really in this time being forced to go within. And that's so uncomfortable because during the summer when it's light and it's bright, you can completely 
keep yourself busy and you never have to think about your day and you don't have to think about the troubles that you've had in that day or who pissed you off in that moment or, or what made you feel uncomfortable within the day, because there's constantly ways to reach out and do something else and do something different, get online, go to a park, do, do whatever it is we find that we can do in the summertime, but in the winter, it's not there. And so we, people tend to get pretty depressed in this time. Um, they don't get to go outside and feel that warm connection with mother nature as much as they did. And so I think during this time, it is really best to get pretty selfish in how you're feeling in this moment and pay attention to all the the uncomfortability that comes up during this time. And, and I will always say, and what they always tell me is to have people balance themselves. However, that means, if that means to balance yourselves going, you know, working with your chakras, which is always paramount when you're doing any kind of work in yourself. Um, but also go within and just take time to be quiet. I, during this time, we, talk, 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 talk. And then even when we say our, a prayer or do a ritual, we will put it out there, but we never sit and listen to the information coming back to us. And this time in this season right now, in the dark season, it's time to do this. This is the best time to do this because there is not a ton of things taking our attention away. As I mean, yes, there's the holidays, but that's two days out of the year. And you can really focus on it if that's, you know, that's what's going to keep your attention away from yourself. But it really is time to focus in on ourselves and how we're responding to things. And do we like how we're responding to things? Is it time to change the way we're responding? So it really feels like it is a time to pay attention to our own emotions right now. Not that. I got that. So what occurs to me as I'm hearing this is that it would be very helpful to bring in the chakra system and tune into what like ways that we can connect because not everyone understands the chakras necessarily mm. and don't they don't really have a sense of well how do I even know what is happening in there. So yes. do you have, can you give us um, some kind of process from the Pleiades, Pleiadians that uh, they've given you maybe um, for tuning in to one or more chakras and then how do we actually get that information? It is, yes, it is. It is connecting to your breath at first. And when we connect to our breath, we have all these thoughts that come in. And, and what I feel there is a little miscommunication on when these thoughts come in is that many people say, well, you know, you just thank the thoughts for being there and dismiss them. And that is, is not helpful because these thoughts that come in are, are integration thoughts. These are the thoughts that when we sit and we're quiet with ourselves, the ones that pop in are the dominant, the dominant energies of the day. And so we're being asked at that time when those thoughts come flooding in about, okay, well, this person pissed me off, you know, during lunch day, and this really upset me. My boss did this. And all of these thoughts that are coming in are the dominant frequencies. And so when we, these thoughts come in, we're being asked to observe them. And when we observe them, we get a feeling in our, in our system, in our, in our, um, in our chakras, in our, uh, energetic nervous system, which are the seven chakras, and you'll get a feeling there, an uncomfortability, and then it's observing what that uncomfortability is. Is it that this person, you know, I said something that made me feel like I really needed to fight for it because I felt, you know, powerless in that moment. And why did I feel powerless in that moment? So it's paying attention to yourself and what this, what it shows, how it shows up in your body. Um, also your chakras, you know, you have your, your root chakra and that chakra, every chakra is governs a piece of our system. When we come in and we incarnate every time we incarnate, we are given this beautiful system that is helping us navigate this world around us. And we have learned at such a young age, how to bypass that system. We learn to give it up to whoever we need to give it up to. If we pray to whoever and we bypass 
our own emotions. And to come back into the fold of your own self, it's paying attention to your own body and what emotions come up when emotions come up. What does it feel like? Um, so your root chakra is your your governing of your um, ancestors, Mother Gaia, patterns, everything that the earth has been through, your survival instinct, that fight or flight, making you feel that you are connected. So working on that when you feel that you are being hit constantly by the world, when things, when you feel like you are not grounded, like everything is coming at you and you cannot pause to say, this is where I stand on the matter. That's the root chakra you want to work with. The next one is sacral. And that's your creativity, your, your uh, connection to your families, any relationship you have, your sexuality. And so when you're feeling that you are off in your relationships, which a lot of us are, you know, we have, we have, we hang on to relationships that no longer serve. And so they can be um, underactive or overactive. You could want to be friends with absolutely everybody. And that is like that overactive, you know, um, chakra. And then if you want to hermit yourself and be away from everybody, that's the underactive piece of it. Uh, moving up, you have the sacral and that's your personal power. That's where you feel like you can move in this earth. And again, there's over and under. You're feeling like you need to be in front of everybody at all times because you don't feel safe by yourself or underactive because you really don't want to be around anybody and you feel like you can't move anymore and you have to stay put to keep yourself safe. Um, then there's the heart. Heart's compassion, compassion for others, but also mostly compassion for yourself because when you have compassion for yourself, you can then have compassion for others. Um, then your throat, your expression of yourself. Um, again, when it's overactive, you want to talk to everybody, tell everybody your truth, and they're going to tell hear you whether you want to, whether they want to hear you or not, or you're very quiet and meek and you don't want to rock the boat, so you stay quiet. Um, your, your third eye, and that is your self-awareness and your connection to the intuition and being able to see things for what they really are, breaking that illusion that we are all separate. And then there's your crown, who is your, that's your access to galactic and to all the angels and your guides and, and keeping these two are the, usually the, the last two to open, but once they do, it comes in fully. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> now we've gotten a, a picture, you know, an actual picture of what that field is inside of every single body right mm -hmm. this may be new information for some of you you've never you've heard of this term chakra but you've never really known what are they things right and there are diagrams i don't have one with me at the moment i wish i had thought of that to bring <laughs> it up but uh there are many if you just put c h a k r a s that's how you spell chakras um, and it will, you'll get different diagrams for what those look like. Mm -hmm. And each one of those has a different color frequency, a sound, all of the different avenues of access to this amazing energy system that you can access. And of course, we're here if you want to be <laughs> checking in with, okay, I'm feeling this stuff in this part of my body. What chakra is that connected to, right? We can walk you through that if you want to. Um, okay. Let's see. So since you're so connected to the Pleiadians, um, can you tune in specifically to them and ask for a specific message from them to those of you, those of us who might be listening? Yes. And I have actually had a huge message that's been coming through just very like this last few weeks. And it comes through right now strong as well. And it is the, um, the process or the very long process of what people's spiritual awakening looks like. I think, you know, I get all this information about we're all in such a degree of awakening. Not all of us. That's let me change that. The ones who are in aware that there is a shift happening, 
we are those we are in degrees of awakening and each degree has this level of of steps that you know our body goes through and our consciousness goes through understanding who we are um as spirit here you know we are mostly spirit and we're just a tiny bit human and some people are really we're really starting to open that up and expand that and so the message that i've been given so strongly is is helping people understand what that awakening looks like what what are the steps a lot of them can be incredibly lonely and they're lonely because we have all had a huge structure of what we're supposed to believe it was handed to us here's what you believe and if you don't well you're weird or you're not, you know you're not normal and now is a time that everybody's starting to see well what's normal you know what does that mean even and who started that you know and what why did that happen and that doesn't serve anymore and and that is a very lonely process and also looking at ourselves and how we have fit into this programming and 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 kind of you know understanding okay well I don't want to be in that program. I don't want to be in another program. Where do I go? I'm scared, you know, and, and, and so it's really paying attention to ourselves. It's going back into ourselves. We believe that we have been, you know, made for a certain purpose and this purpose, if we don't find that one purpose, we have lost this whole life cycle. You know, it's, it's, you know, I, I got to find what my purpose is when, when the real message is not to find that, you know, exact purpose, because you'll never get to that, that place. Once you get to that place, you will always want more. We are set up that way to constantly manifest, to show us that we have this ability to constantly create. And so that's showing people that that's why we're here. We are the creators and everybody has their own reality and their own perception. And what does that reality look like? What does it mean to resonate with something truly and actually grab it and say, okay, well, that's my belief now and not, okay, I resonate a little bit, but I know what I'm supposed to believe. So I feel very off. I don't know. I don't trust. And they get stuck in the space. And it's, you know, it's really a trusting what you resonate with because we are being called to look at our life so much different than how we have been functioning up until now. Up yeah. until probably the last three, four years, you know, I would say around 2020, things really shifted and um, the earth shifted. And now here we all are. And here so we are. Using time. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. So that was a lot of great information, <laughs> great information. And what we, what we attempt to do in this program as much as possible is to give you real tools, tips, and techniques that you can use on your own outside of this program, as well as during the program. So one of the things that occurs to me is that we might want to do a little writing exercise or meditation for you. We can do both actually for accessing what like maybe the question even, what are my next steps? Or what's one step that I can take right now to move me forward, to receive inside of my heart what it is that I believe right now? Those are two different questions that we could take on. And that's what occurs to me. Um, and... It also occurs to me that maybe we can do a tag team approach with this where um, where you walk them through a journaling exercise for that, that they can access. And then I can follow that up with some light language to ground it in. And then we can maybe, I've also got a couple of card decks here to follow that up with, because we like to give you some fun as well not just our talking and we want love our talking. We love to share wisdom with you. And we also want to give you some things that you can actually, you know, dig your teeth into <laughs> as the meat of the program. So um, what do you think about a little journaling prompt? Sure. Um, yeah, we can do that. Also, um, 
the ones that I do, well, yeah. So the ones I do with my clients has a lot to do with getting comfortable with every emotion that they're having. Wow. Um, often when we start a writing, a journaling, what people tend to do, and it's funny, <laughs> but we tend to want to write it as if it's being edited by somebody or being looked at by somebody. So we write it in judgment of ourselves. You know, even though it's a journaling, even though we're the only ones seeing it, you know, we we end up writing that because each and every one of us has this little manager in our head that says, well, you need to be doing that. Well, that didn't look right. Oh, you need to change that. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Well, you sound really bitchy right there. You sound, you know, we, we tend to really judge ourselves and how we're writing. And so, um, yeah, I would love to first state that, that when you first write, are we going into it now? Um, if you want oh. to, we've got time to do that. We could also do a little meditation if you want to take people through a little meditation with with a journal prompt or a, a questioning like, you know, what's my first step? Okay. Um, let's see. We're creating it as we go and creator yeah. is telling us what to do from here forward. So this is the this is the play of it. I would say when you start your first prompting on your steps of spiritual awakening, um, you would have to first look at what spiritual awakening looks like, I think, um, because that's confusing to people. And they feel, you know, when it first happens, I know the first emotion or feeling that comes with the beginning of spiritual awakening that you feel detached from your life. You feel almost other from everything that you have been believing up until this point. And this is a long process. When this first starts, people really get stuck in it because it really is deconstructing old truths and reconstructing your truth of what you believe. And so when it comes to things like that, I would say journey, you know, for the prompting would be, um, it would all depend on what you're really working on at that point, you know, putting down, I have, uh, let's see. Writing, you know, writing down your beliefs when something comes against you. Um, a lot of people struggle first with what is God. Mm -hmm. That's one of the very first questions that is asked when we get put in the spiritual awakening. What do I believe about God? And if you don't believe in God at all, then you're going to go the route of, well, I don't know if there's something out there. Like maybe it's just me, you know, maybe there isn't. Okay. I know there's connections to trees and earth and all of that, but you know, I don't know about this bigger source energy. And then if you were religious or you grew up in the church of any kind and you say, well, what about the guy up there on the throne and who's that and who's watching me? Am I now not protected? And so it's really asking yourself, then what do I believe in? And the prompt would be, what do I, be you know, what, what do I believe in a higher power? And then writing down your beliefs. That's you know, what are the pros? What are the cons? What, what is it that you think? And then going through them and allow your stomach, allow your system to give you the answer. Because when you look at something and it doesn't ring true, something will go into your gut and hit you and be like, mm. and so you'll think, oh, well, maybe I don't believe that. So you put that aside and you write that piece. I don't know if I, you know, this is something I don't know if I believe. And so you put that on another column and you go down the list on these columns. And if you believe it, there will be an expansion. There will be a, a homey feeling. There will be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh that, 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 yep, that feels comfortable. I believe that. And really it is, and it sounds like, well, God, I'm like almost 50. I'm not going to write a list of what I believe. It truly is re constructing your beliefs. And that it would be the first piece I would. And then on the prompts, the ones that you don't believe and that you put onto a side column, go down that list and say, okay, what is I believe about? What do I believe about this? Do research, figure, you know, figure yourself out because this is important. This is the very important piece to get on to your next step. Is That's to perfect. Out. Yeah. That's perfect. So let's take a little break. And then when we come back, we're going to, I'm going to take us through a little bit 
of a meditation to access some of this information. And then I encourage you to get paper and pen or your typewriter, if your typewriter or your computer, whatever you work. Some people work with a typewriter because yeah. they're old school, right? Yeah. I use a pen and paper because it's old school, um, you know, or pencil. I'm not a pencil person, but but something on paper actually makes a huge difference if you can do that. There's something magical about using a paper and a pencil or pen. Um, I invite you to do that. We're going to take a break so that you can use the restroom, get something to eat, uh, get some water, whatever you need. And then we'll be back to do another little exercise for you. And I've also got my handy dandy cards for you. <laughs> so we'll be back in a couple minutes. To the show, we are talking about uh, messages from the Pleiadians and the wisdom for you. How do you we check in with our chakra system? How do we check in with our guidance? How do we know what in the heck is going on inside of ourselves? So we actually have someone that has a question for the Pleiadians. Emily, would you like to ask your question now so that we can do that uh, <laughs> before we end? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Emily. Um, and I just wanted to ask, um, so I feel like everything in my life is going really well right now. And I'm doing so many things. And I really am super happy. But I just wanted to make sure like, if I'm doing everything I need to be doing, because it's hard to, you know, the V up what you're doing across all the things you need to do. So sometimes I'm scared, maybe I'm forgetting something that's important or if I'm really doing all the things that I need to be doing, if I'm on the right path. That's a great, is that for me? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is a great question. Um, first, they want me to tell you to relax. Um, that trust this good feeling is sound, you know, you sound, you know, you're doing great. You know, you're doing good and they want you to really trust that good feeling. We often, when things are going good, we, our ego steps in and says, oh, but did you forget that? Oh, don't get too big for your britches. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, you may forget that. And you say, well, thank you, ego. Um, I got it, <laughs> you know, and you continue to do what you're doing. And if you've missed something, it'll come back around. It will come back around for you to correct that mistake and so that you will have the information going forward. But they're telling me that you are definitely on the right, you're, you're going, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. They said that you do trust your intuition and to continue to trust your intuition and to um, not let yourself get critical of yourself because that is the fastest way we can hurt and limit ourselves, especially when things are going well and we're feeling expansive is the time that the ego wants to make sure that you're not getting too big for your, you know, your britches here and wants to maybe have you come down a little bit. And the ego is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. It's beneficial for you, but it only helps us to our expansion to so long. And then we have to learn to think past that ego piece of it. And that's what they're letting me they're wanting me to tell you right now is, is don't get caught up in that ego piece, not egotistical. I mean, the ego piece that, that holds us true to where we're at always, you know, or, or, or holds us rooted in our experiences is what I mean. Hold us rooted into our experiences. That's the ego I'm talking about. Um, the one that can also keep you from jumping off a cliff because in another life, you know, you can fly. So it's very beneficial, but in our expansion, spiritual awakening, it will fight to keep you on the human side of it. And that is when we are learning to work and think past that ego piece. And that's what they're telling me is that was what's jumping in is that ego piece. And so you acknowledge it but think past it and know that if there is something that you're supposed to catch, it will come back to you until you catch it, but that you are very firm on your foundation of what you're doing right now and to trust yourself. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That sounds 
that all sounded very accurate. <laughs> the first thing you said about relax, I was like, okay, that's valid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah I, I do follow my intuition a lot, but you know, life is crazy and you never know if you're doing the right thing. Right. The other thing, the other thing I'm picking up, um, Emily, is that they want you to take more time for yourself. Um, a lot of times when we're in service to others, um, we tend to put ourselves on the back burner <laughs> and and just do whatever's ne necessary in order to get things done in our lives. And what I'm hearing from guidance that I work with is, and also it's your guidance because we all have guidance that works collectively together. So we're not like different pieces, right? Well, we are different pieces of the whole pie. And um, and the guidance might be a little of yours and it might be a little of mine. It might be a little bit of Angie's. It might be a little bit of whoever's listening, right? We're all in it together. So there, what I'm hearing from the highest wisdom is to take time for yourself. You might start with a ritual in the middle, in the morning when you wake up, just to start your day, um, help you to just really hone in on the most important things for your day and bring in your self-care, have that as a priority, right? And you might even write it down as, okay, today I'm going to da -da 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 for these things that have to be done. And at the top of the list is my self-care. Make sure I eat breakfast. Make sure that I take a shower. Make sure that I look at myself in the mirror and say, I love you. Uh, make sure that I um, walk the dog. I don't know. Whatever it is that is self-care for you and self-care for your home. That's key. And then you get to have the to-dos, but definitely have a more well-rounded, balanced approach rather than just, okay, I'm just doing what I need to do and I'm getting it done. And yeah, you know, I think I had my intuition talking, but you know, I really have all this other going on too. We're bringing it all together into one, one self. And it's integrating yourself. You're going to ask, you can ask your guidance to help you integrate all of the learnings that you're having right now, because you're probably having a lot like all of us are. So trust yourself, love yourself and continue to ask for support. So that's what I'm getting for you, my dear. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay. Yeah, I definitely did need to hear that. So <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Good deal. Okay. So we do have a few minutes left. Um, Let's let's have ourselves actually go into our body systems where we live and listen to what's there. And you can actually guide us a little bit, uh, Angie, with that and okay. from the Pleiadians and whoever, whatever other guides you work with that we can access our knowing. Okay. Um, do we want to ask a question in this in this exercise or is it just to bring people into their body? Um, if anyone has a question they'd like to ask, if you have a question you'd like to ask, you can do that. Okay. So however we want to do it, however it wants to show up. Maybe we'll up. just, um, okay, we'll just kind of let, us, let ourselves get comfortable in the motions that we're feeling right now. Okay, great. Okay. So close your eyes and get comfortable and begin to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And this is about really connecting to your breath, getting back in your body, And as you're connecting into your breath, thoughts will begin to come up. And this is not about dismissing these thoughts. It is about observing them.
And so as a thought comes in, observe why this thought is dominant in your thoughts right now. Where do you feel this energy in your body? Observing where it feels active in your system. And now invite your energy, invite universal energy in, taking breaths to bring in that energy. Filling your system up. And you can feel that no matter what it is that you are feeling at this moment, this underlining energy that you bring in through the universe gives this sense of well being, gives a sense of connection, and it expands your energy out. Still observing. What emotion is this thought bringing up? Is this emotion familiar? Is this something you've been working on? Just observing it compassionately. Taking another few deep breaths. Allowing this new awareness to integrate into your system with the help of universal energy. You take a final deep breath. And allow yourself to then become aware of the room around you again. Opening up. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Yay. That was lovely. <laughs> and it's not about judging yourself. That is what we do. We have these, these feelings and we'll bring something in and then we'll immediately want to judge ourselves on what we've just figured out about ourselves. It is important that we don't judge ourselves on what we figured out, but just understanding, okay, this is something that's bringing either joy or it's bringing uncomfortability. And if it's uncomfortable, what do I need to do now? Next time, do I need to create a boundary around it? Do I need to speak up now to show my desire on the issue? Do I need to, you know, it's whatever it is, it's observing yourself and being compassionate that you are always in a process of evolving and giving yourself that grace to evolve. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, and it's really interesting as I was just observing, I was like, I, what I was picking up was not necessarily my own thoughts, mm -hmm. but I was hearing <laughs> other people's thoughts about how do I know if I'm doing it right? <laughs> yes. How do I know if I'm actually accessing what I'm supposed to, right? That supposed to thing Mm -hmm. is the is the judgment yes whoever's going through that that's the judgment that continually keeps you from 
your bliss, your joy, your forward movement, your trust in the process. This is the process of a way to say like, honestly, <laughs> when I first started, you know, what blocked me the beginning in, in the most is all my expectations of what intuition looked like. I mean, I was a, such a big fan of the TV show charmed or any, which kind of, you know, movie, I always was so in the powers and I wanted them. And so I really got myself caught up on what is that, that must be what it looked like. That's Hollywood's view of it. This is called subtle energy. It's called subtle energy for a reason, because in all of us, it is subtle and you have to be quiet in yourself to hear the subtle energy. And if you're feeling good about it, trust it because everyone is going to be a little bit different in how it comes in. Yes. Absolutely. Nobody has this complete um, format or, or build on what it looks like. That's yep. not what it is to have a spiritual awakening and spiritual awakening is completely personal and everybody is going to do it differently. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when we say spiritual awakening and did you hear that? No, it, it might not be something you hear audibly. It might be something that just, it kind of locks in. Mm -hmm. Like it might come in, in the top of your head. It might come in here. You might feel something like a pulsing or a tingling, or you might like all of a sudden you get really cold and you're like, what is that? <laughs> right. Yes. Some kind of body sensation might be waking up your awareness, right? There is no correct way. That's what Angie's saying. There's no yes. correct way to do it. We know as our own spiritual awakenings have happened and, and are happening, that we are multi-sensory, multi-dimensional beings of light that are here in a body, that are here to experience life. And our job as beings of light are is to expand ourselves to include our physical selves, right? So I'm seeing that we have five minutes left for those of you who still want to call in, you can, but make it quick. It's 1-800-930-2819 or chat on the chat line. And before we end, I told you that I would give you a card to take with you for your, for your, you know, expansion, for your process, for your looking within something to kind of ponder as we end here. So I'm going to do that here and I'm going to ask you, Angie, these are the star. What are these? They're the star seed cards. Perfect. Cause we are, many of us are star seeds who have come to the planet from the stars. So go ahead and tell me as I take my hand over, which car oh. wants so, this one. Yep. All right. This one right here. We'll see what it is. Ooh, star family. <laughs> You're part of a team of souls. Call in the support. All right. So if you have tuned into this show, you are tuning in to support. We are physical support for you. And there's many, many other support structures available to you. So don't do life alone. This is the time to stop doing life alone and allow yourselves to expand, allow yourselves to connect, allow yourselves to listen to music or read books, um, attend workshops, which by the way, we do have a workshop that we're gonna be doing in January. If yes. you wanna know more, contact either Angie or myself. And in the last couple of minutes, Angie, why don't you tell them about how to find you? And sure. work with you. So I am, uh, it's www.universalrestorativeenergy.com and uh, you can schedule a discovery call with me and that's a free 20 minutes. We can go over the things that you're wanting to work on or what's been stopping you or the confusions of life. I think during the spiritual awakening, it is so important that we do seek out help in this time, because when you don't seek out help, that's the times that you're like, well, I've been trying to do this for 20 years. And, and sometimes this help really catalysts. I wouldn't say sometimes I would say the majority of the time when you find a coach 
that you resonate with and you trust, then the catalyst can be great and profound. And once you get on, you start this process and you are able to go through the stages of it, you cannot turn back your back on it. You know, you are forever changed. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So if you resonate with Angie, please, please, please contact her, get your life in order. <laughs> this is the time to really, really expand folks. You've got so much support available to you. And if you resonate with me and want to connect with me, I am also a coach. I'm your spiritual transformation coach. And, um, I am, I have programs and light language uh, workshops and all kinds of stuff for you. If you want to contact me, you can find me at bright butterfly network.com. And I'm always here every week, the Empower Me show from noon to one Pacific time. Thank you all for tuning in. We so love you. <laughs> we so love you. And we so believe in who you are because you're a courageous soul being here on this planet. It takes courage to be a human being. And we know that. And you have taken this on with grace and love and, and sometimes joy, <laughs> hopefully more joy than not. And spiritual um, awakening takes so much courage. Yes, it does. So yes, much it. courage. Yes. Congratulations for those of you who are here. And we are going to be tuning in next Thursday, same time, same place. And Angie, thank you so much for joining me once thank again. Thank you for having me. I just love you to pieces. <laughs> I love you. And, uh, it was fun. Can't wait, can't wait to see you again. Yeah. And please take care of yourselves and know that your life is up to you. Many, many blessings. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you for listening to the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright on Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to learn more about living a fully empowered life. Remember that your life is up to you and you can choose the spiritual path you are on. There is spiritual energy and wisdom in everything and everyone around you. Listen carefully for what the universe is trying to tell you in every moment. You are already being guided along your journey. Call upon your spirit guides anytime you need help with anything. Know that you are safe in every moment, even if it seems that you are not. For more information about Pam Bright, visit brightbutterflyenterprises.com or email theempowermeshow at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening. We hope to see you next week.